We're here in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and we are looking at a terracotta flask displaying an image of St. Minas, and this is one of many such flasks that survive. You go to many museums across the United States, across Europe, and you'll find these, and that's because they were produced in quantities of thousands, no doubt, because I know when they first excavated the site, the shrine of St. Minas in the early 20th century, they found hundreds, even there. These objects were made uh, in large numbers for pilgrimage sites so that pilgrims could take away a memento or blessing from the site after they had prayed to the saint. They were probably given freely to the pilgrims, although we don't really know. Maybe the pilgrims bought them, but merchants probably brought them onwards too because they had a certain status associated with them because they were associated with the famous saint. They were contact relics, maybe also given as diplomatic gifts. In late antiquity and Byzantium, saints like Minas were known for working miracles. Saint Minas had many miracles attributed to him, uh, including healing and protecting people. And so when pilgrims visited the site of the saint's shrine, they were able to pray to him, but they wanted to take something away. And in a sense, you can think about tourists today, people who come to places like the Met, where we are now, who want to hit the gift shop on the way out and take something with them to remember. Perhaps a similar phenomenon was going on where pilgrims wanted to take away a blessing from this site. And it follows then that they would hope that such objects would carry a little bit of the saint's blessing and protection and healing with them. And there are even examples of these flasks being found in tombs with bodies, suggesting that there was a hope that the flask would carry some of the saint's blessing into the next life. And these objects were wide-ranging in terms of their audience. I believe they've been found in locations as far flung as Samarkand in Central Asia and the west coast of Britain. Most of them have been found in Egypt and the broader Levant region. Of course, the location of St. Minas' shrine was in Egypt, about 30 miles southwest of Alexandria. But it's clear that this was a shrine that had become well known and a saint who was widely revered so that when pilgrims visited this site, they brought these kinds of pilgrim flasks far, many hundreds of miles away to their homes, very far away from Egypt. The camels with his body stopped moving, and this was taken as a divine sign. that This was meant to be his burial site. And at this site, the place known as Abu Mina sprang up around the saint's burial. And it was a place that, in the centuries that followed, was a major uh, site for pilgrimage. There were hostels, places for these pilgrims to stay. And these flasks were used so that pilgrims could take with them, presumably, a little bit of the holy water from the holy well near the, near the tomb, or some of the oil from one of the lamps near the saint's shrine. These flasks were produced on a large scale. Most of them seem to have been molded in two parts and then stuck together and the handles added on. Most have this same characteristic shape, a round, flat body on the bottom with a narrow neck and spout on the top and these two handles on either side. The consistent feature is the saint on the front with his arms outstretched in what was then the gesture of prayer with the, a camel on each side. Now, some have the same image on the back, but some also depict close-up shots sort of of St. Minas in which he's clearly African. It's interesting that these flasks testify to us to the heterogeneity of the early Byzantine Empire. Abu Mina remained a major pilgrimage site for the centuries following the saint's death uh, until the mid-7th century when the region came under Arab rule. But the widespread of discoveries of Mina's flasks, not only in Egypt, but the surrounding area and even as far west as Britain, really testifies to the importance of the saint and this sacred site uh, during the Middle Ages.